To, it's an honor to be part of this session here in this round. Um, so also thanks for this kind of introduction. My name is, uh, is Karsten. Um, I'm the, the head of the Hydra Hub. Hydra Hub is an initiative that combines the hydrogen competencies of the entire TIF Nord group, also including our representatives here um, in India from TIF North India. Um, I want to, to start basically with a general reminder <coughs> that also has been stressed in various presentations during this conference and also in our session, namely the fact that we need to get to zero greenhouse gas emission. So today we produce billions of tons for making things or for getting around. And if we will not reduce those numbers, we will face frightful consequences. But what does this mean in concrete? So not sufficiently reducing the greenhouse gas emissions will risk the life of millions of people since, for instance, more than 400 million additional people might suffer from water shortage. So <clears throat> this should all only again stress the, the importance and the fundamental need to, to change. And <clears throat> the pathway is the so-called two degree or one, um, 1 1.5 degree pathway. And to achieve this pathway and this awful goal, all sectors, also including the oil and gas industry, will require dramatic emission reductions over the next 10 years. So this is, this is the awful goal. It's not per se about hydrogen, hydrogen itself. It's more about the impact of hydrogen as a new or yeah, an emerging type of energy carrier. So what we can or already observed today, and this is the, the, the good consequence and the first in the, in the identification in the science, is that green investments having and are becoming more mainstream. And this is basically driven by various factors, for instance, by strong policies and policy making, by declining costs or higher fuel prices, but also in, due to changes in the public opinion and the opinion of our customers and the consumers. And considering this change which has already started and we have seen it in the presentations, in the sessions and in different sectors like in the av aviation and the entire topic around um, power to X, um, the, the, the advantage here for the oil and gas industry is that the oil and gas industry basically already contains capabilities which are of fundamental value for executing the required operation model for the new low carbon energy system. So for instance, in the case of hydrogen, um, those capabilities basically refer to established logistics networks that the companies have already today, or the already established safety processes in order to handle the gases and the oil. So those are some supporting factors which enable the oil and gas industry in the transition, in the transformation towards the net zero and a new low carbon energy system. The, or what we already can observe today, and this is what I just have mentioned, that significant initial investments in large scale clean hydrogen or production, development, storage, and transportation projects are already underway. Although, and this, is, this cannot be ignored, there are still some major technological or infrastructural and legislative related challenges that must be overcome to ensure the full development and the full market grant. And I want to take the chance to basically highlight four of those core implications for the oil and gas industry for the market ramp up, which basically reach from the establishment of sustainable hydrogen ecosystem to the formation of international supply chains to the final development of appropriate approaches for the final sustainability assessment. Because as we mentioned at the, at, at the beginning, at the end what matters basically is the impact which we are going to achieve by referring um, to hydrogen as one of the, the core central parts 
of the new low carbon energy system. So therefore, we also need to ensure that we have appropriate measures and techniques to, to make this impact trans transparent and also measurable and observable, and also to define either redefine the existing measures or re re redefine and define new measures. So starting with one of the, the first implications, and the overall starting point is basically the development of sustainable or a sustainable hydrogen ecosystem. Although having already the capability to, to or that might be transferable to the new energy system, the companies might be confronted with new strategic assets in the hydrogen value chain. And those assets, for instance, refer to the planning, the construction, but also the operation of production and storage faci facilities for hydrogen. For some parts, they're already established, and those are well-known technologies. But in other parts, we are still having kind of coexisting technologies, right? And therefore, we also need to 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 enter this kind of challenge to to take the the open questions and, for instance, how to to make those entire systems sustainable, but also um, from an economic point of view sustainable. So, therefore, the the development of the central production site for hydrogen basically requires an early planning and development of site concepts. And those concepts, they, they need to imply in holistic planning, which covers economic, ecological, social, but also safety aspects. And this is one of the, the challenges that companies at the moment are facing to combine all the different factors, because on the one side, we want to generate the, the positive impact for the climate. This is the, the core motivator. On the other hand, we are all driven um, to make and generate profit to yeah, to sustain our company and also we need to ensure that all the entire new processes and also assets are safe and secure. So this is one of the, the major first um, building block building up those international and also central um, hydrogen ecosystems. And in addition to building up those ecosystems. As, as mentioned, different technologies are still coexisting, and this is what we have seen on one of the, the slides before. We, we, it's not only about hydrogen, right? So we also will take hydrogen, and then we might convert it into different carrier materials, like um, ammonia. And therefore, what the, the companies also need to early consider in the ramp-up strategies is how to, to, to implement the appropriate openness to the different technological alternatives and also consider here the actual expected demand for hydrogen. So those are two, two of the major topics which we are currently um, observing when we are in discussion with our clients. On the one hand, one of the major questions um, how to, what, on what kind of technology should the company rely on. So here our major recommendation is that we, especially in the early phase of the market ramp up, we will need an open approach to all types of technological alternatives in the hydrogen ecosystem. And then the second topic is still there are some doubts on the actual demand for hydrogen. Although we are we all know and we are all expecting that there will be a major increase in the demand, it's still one of the major challenges if you look from the supply side, side to really have this kind of committed demand for, let's say, the, the large volumes of hydrogen. And this is also kind of hindering factor for many companies to really um, intensively make the next step and move forward in the market ramp. Having just mentioned the, the consideration, consideration of both supply and demand, um, due to its characteristics of hydrogen, hydrogen will develop to an internationally traded commodity in the medium to long term. So this is, I, I think this is um, unquestionable. For this reason, the, the required trade routes, they have to be planned early and also corresponding trade collaboration 
have to become established. And also here, we, we can only see different governmental incentives, and this is also what should be taken into account and also make use of those kind of supporting factors in starting the negotiations with potential export regions. To give you just one example, in Germany, we are going to expect that about 80% of our future hydrogen demand needs to become important. So we ourselves, as a nation, we will not be able to self-sustain and self-supply our demand for hydrogen. And therefore, also, we are forced, and we see it from different perspectives, we are forced to early go and start the negotiations with potential import or export regions. And the same we have on the other side with potential export regions, they also need to start early to ensure and to secure um, the demand in different regions. So at the end, this, this is what, what we already can see today. This will lead also to the emergence and development of global ports for hydrogen. And this is also in a special sector which needs to become addressed early because the infrastructure um, is one of the crucial factors in the market wrap up. Without the appropriate infrastructure, we will not be able um, to, to basically match the demand between supply and demand in, in the final in the final market mechanism and the market ramp up. So what does this mean in, in concrete for the oil and gas industry? So the companies need to basically focus on the development of the required infrastructure and also the transportation capacities. They, they need to establish appropriate trading systems, particularly if we are talking about the international um, alignment of supply and demand of hydrogen in the market. They need to start early with the formation of partnerships and the most important factor, the selection of proper export region in, also, all, in order to secure the demand for hydrogen. The, in building up those supply chains, in particular the international supply chain, the price of hydrogen, and this is the third base major implication, the price of hydrogen will take over a major role. So the price basically refers to one of the major drivers in the entire market ramp up and the entry into different regional markets. Particularly in the early market ramp up phase in which we, we are in the moment, a, value, a so called value based pricing approach should be prioritized and also implemented by the companies. So the basic idea here is that the value and the price both basically depend on the comparison of different alternatives for reducing the overall greenhouse gas emissions during the customer's usage. So the, the, the core concern of the customers is basically to reduce um, its greenhouse gas emission and therefore they do have different alternatives. And by referring to hydrogen or one of its alternatives like ammonia, this is only one of the potential alternatives. And for determining the appropriate price in the market, the, the price of hydrogen needs to be compared um, related to the different alternatives that we have. And one procedure which we are recommending and also supporting um, for, for this kind of value-based pricing approach um, especially starting with the indi indication of the supply chain. And then, and this is only the, the first step because the crucial step here is the analysis of the CO2 emissions along the entire supply chain. Because this is one of the most important determining factors for making additional alternatives for the customers comparable also in order to give them the indication for setting the appropriate price. So this then will be continued with the evaluation of the different alternative options for the customers and at the end this will give us the basis information and the baseline for estimating the price level for the customers which is basically approximated by the value which is derived through the CO2 or the greenhouse gas reduction because this is again one of the, the major drivers and the advantage of this type of um, approaches further 
to also indicate the tipping point. So when the achievable price might exceed the actual cost, because this is one of the, the most crucial factors which also the company companies are facing at the moment. So where, when will we be at this specific tipping point? The fourth core implication refers to the actual sustainability impact of new energy systems. So the determination of the actual achievement in safeguarding the climate basically requires suitable and also objective evaluation approaches for the climate impact of the planned and implemented measures. So therefore, we, we are arguing for a holistic approach that covers own production processes, the full supply chain, which also includes the final application and the usage of hydrogen or its alternatives in the market on the cu at the customer side. So those approaches, they are closely linked to the implementation of holistic certification schemes for climate-friendly hydrogen. What we already have today are the certificates of origin, which are of high relevance, but there's a major but. CO2 emissions, they occur along the entire value chain and in the entire supply chain of hydrogen. And this is today mostly ignored or we don't have the appropriate schemes or projects to also make this type of impact and emission um, observable and transferable. And in addition, with the second dimension, CO2, which is at the moment the, the mostly common referred factor is only one of numerous factors in the entire sustainability assessment. I only want to give one example for the electrolysis we, are, we need uh, the resource water and in many regions where we have suitable conditions in terms of the weather for the electrolysis, um, we might um, have the issue that we suffer from sufficient water resources. So at the end, Therefore, it's not the color of the hydrogen, whether it's blue or green. At the end, it's basically the climate impact that matters and which is achieved by using the hydrogen. Those have just been some examples of the major implications for the oil and gas industry. So and also, some topics okay. where we at the Hydra Hub already offer our support today. So our competences and support basically ranges from the development of hydrogen export strategies and roadmaps to the consultancy of renewable energies and energy efficiency to the assessment and evaluation of sustainable hydrogen supply and supply chains. We hereby basically support our customers along the entire hydrogen value chain through consulting, engineering and training. And this is one crucial factor because what we are observing today is that you cannot only make one one snapshot of a, of a topic. So most of the topics they basically cover the entire supply chain, just as, it, just as presented with the topic on the value-based pricing, where you also need to consider the entire supply chain because one of the most crucial factors always relates to the CO2 or the greenhouse gas emissions, and they do not only occur at one stage in the supply and value chain, but throughout the entire value chain. So hereby, by offering our support to the multiple stakeholders in the value chain, we rely on the competencies of our specialized companies around the globe, also including our companies or competences from North India. So having our head office in Mumbai, we are present in over 40 locations across India, which forms our local basis to also support the oil and gas industry here in India. So therefore, with our more than 150 years of experience within the TIF North Group, as well as our responsibility for safety and sustainability, we are delighted to support the oil and gas industry in navigating the ongoing energy transition towards, and this is the most important motivation, towards the net zero. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to our Q&A session at the end of our session.